This is our first lesson for Chapter 5, Linear Functions. So identifying linear functions from a graph. A linear function is a function whose graph forms, think of what linear means, a straight line And then we also have to think about the definition of a function. So the line has to have a straight line and it also, it must pass the vertical line test. So then the x values cannot repeat. So two components must be fulfilled for it to be a linear function. It has to be linear, and it has to be a function. So you have a big space right here for some examples and non-examples. We'll be doing some of that tomorrow. When you identify a linear function from a table, if you're given the ordered pairs, make a table. And what do you think we have to look for between both the x and y values. What's that called? It's called a common difference. So take a look at this table here. So what's happening from negative 2 to negative 1 to 0 to 1 to 2? We're seeing it's a plus 1. So we have a common difference on that side. What's happening on the y value side. 7 to 4 is a minus 3, 4 to 1 is minus 3. So we do have a common difference. So we are going to have a linear function with this first table. Now what's happening with this next table? Negative 2 to negative 1, negative 1 to 0, 0 to 1, 1 to 2. Looks like it's going up by 1. So I'm seeing something common on this side, but let, let's look here. 6 to 3 is minus 3, but 3 to 2 is minus 1, and then 2 to 3 is plus 1, and 3 to 6 is plus 3. So this is not going to be a linear function because we don't have a common difference with both the x and the y. On our second slide, we have the standard form of a linear equation. Sometimes you can determine if a function is linear just by looking at the equation. A function is linear if it can be written in standard form. What standard form? Is it y equals mx plus b? Or is it something else? Standard form is written where you would have ax plus by equals c. The a is whatever coefficient is in front of the x. It could be 1. It could be negative 2. The b is the coefficient that's written in front of the y. And the c is just the number. So if you look at this box here, you have 3x plus 2y equals 10. y minus 2 is 3x. And negative y equals 5x. Those are all linear. These are not linear. We have 3xy plus x equals 1. x cubed plus y is negative 1. And then x plus 6 divided by y is 12. So jot down some key observations right here that you've noticed that makes the box on the left, which I did in blue, linear, and the box on the right nonlinear. Some key observations that you might have noticed, if you look at this one, this is written in standard form. 3x plus 2y, there's your ax plus by equals c, where 10 is c. y minus 2 is 3x. It's not written in standard form, but can it be written in standard form? Sure. You have y minus 2 is 3x. Well, let's just move some things around. Why don't we minus y, and we have negative 2 equals 3x minus y. 
there's your AX, your BY, and your C. And can you do the same thing with the last one? Sure. You can go ahead and add Y. If you add Y from this side to this side, you end up with 0. And you have 5X plus Y equals 0. Over on the right-hand side, this first equation, you have an XY. We can't have X being multiplied by Y. It's not going to allow you to put it in standard form. Second one, what do you notice with this equation? We have an exponent. No exponents in linear. And this last one here, you have a fraction, a division, 6 divided by Y. If you were to try and get rid of that and multiply, you would end up with a YX over here. And we can't have a Y being multiplied by an X to get you a linear. You actually need an, it being added to it. So these are three examples of nonlinear equations, nonlinear functions. Let's take a look at down at the bottom. Spencer is selling handcrafted hockey stick carriers for $5. The amount he earns is modeled by the function f of x equals 5x, where x is the number of stick carriers he sells. Graph this function and give its domain and range. So we need some labels on our graph right here. Let's, we know that this is x and we know that this is y. Is there anything in the statement here that can help you with what the label is? If you go ahead and read, it says the function f of x equals 5x, where x is the number of stick carriers he sells. So this here is going to be the number of stick carriers, or number of bags. Then what is going to be on the y? Again, looking at the equation, or the, sta uh, the statement, the amount he earns. So that's your money. So now we have to start looking at some values for x. What are some potential values for x? He could sell 0. He could sell 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can pick any numbers here. Uh, these are always good because... We don't know how big our graph is. And they're easy numbers to work with, and it gives you a good starting off point for your, um, your graph. And then go ahead and taking a look at the equation. f of x equals 5x. Well, if he doesn't sell any, he's not going to make any. So that's going to be 0. If he sells 1, he makes 5. If he sells 2, he makes 10. 15, you get the point here. So your graph... is going to end up looking a little bit neater than mine, but it's going to just continue trending upward. It is linear because there is a relationship. This is a plus one. This is a plus five. If you picked different numbers, zero, one, five, seven, you won't necessarily see the plus one and plus five, but filling in the gaps, you'll be able to see it, and your, your graph will show you.